summarize. Russ, up to you. Great. Uh, thank you, Brees. I appreciate the, the intro and the welcome. Uh, I'll try and keep an eye on the, the chat uh, window. Um, but if you do want to sort of just cluster over and, uh, you know, uh, speak to, to me directly, I can repeat your question back to everybody else. That can also work. Um, if you're uh, over in your own little sidebar, that's totally cool. Um, the, the, the idea is to really talk a little bit about what we're, the journey we're on at Volkswagen here to build um, a, a new uh, cloud platform that allows us to, to, to sort of drive new experiences on top of um, our vehicles. Um, and also, you know, some of the economies of scale that, that we can deliver uniquely as Volkswagen compared with some others in the market. Um, I thought I'd start with, uh, you know, just a little bit of who we are. Volkswagen um, is, is a well-known brand, but I suspect there are some things um, that you don't know about Volkswagen. Um, for example, uh, we're actually the parent company for lots and lots of, com of uh, other um, automotive brands out there today. So um, Audi, uh, Porsche, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Bentley, um, all here in the U.S., present brands in the U.S., Seat and Skoda, for um, those of you that have uh, European backgrounds and uh, may, know, may know those brands, and, and also Ducati uh, as a motorcycle brand, and uh, Truck, Scania, and Man, we're also... Um, we own uh, those companies as well. So we're the world's largest um, auto manufacturer, kind of, sort of, mostly. Uh, actually, we kind of uh, jostle for the top spot with Toyota. And, and I think in 2020, um, they actually came out on top ever so slightly. But we're still talking about an enormous amount of volume. Uh, we, we produce uh, something like 11 million vehicles a year. And that really speaks to the scale that we're talking about here, right? When we think about a connected vehicle platform, we're, we're putting um, potentially 10, 11, 12 million new vehicles onto that platform um, on an annual basis. And, and the sorts of size and scale um, that we have to deal with is really quite different um, to you know, some of the other uh, manufacturers that are out there trying to solve similar problems. It's not just the number of vehicles um, that are large, our team is enormous. Uh, for those of you that know me, I've kind of been a serial startup guy. And, and so uh, teams of like 250, 300 people has seemed large to me in the past. We are 670,000 people or so. That is not a typo. Um, the VWAC group uh, that I have joined recently is, is much smaller though. We're, we're about 200 people. Um, all based, uh, pre well, predominantly based in Redmond, Washington. Um, we, we started this little startup inside Volkswagen about a year and a half ago. Um, so uh, January of last year, there was something like five people at the company. Um, we hired about 155, 160 people through, uh, through uh, 2020. I joined uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, and we're going to continue to grow um, uh, throughout this year as we sort of figure out um, all the things that we want to do uh, with the platform. You know, you can actually move the window okay. with the slide. I'll, I'll assume ready. everybody's okay then. Uh, we're also, you know, we're committed to uh, a migration toward electric vehicles. Um, you, you'll probably have seen some uh, new things uh, recently. We announced the ID4, for example, as a Volkswagen uh, product that's that's going to be assembled uh, here in the U.S. So uh, that's at our Chattanooga facilities in Tennessee. We'll be assembling electric vehicles there. Uh, the, the Audi portfolio has a number of um, vehicles uh, in production on sale at the moment and coming soon. So um, the e-tron uh, has been out for a while. Uh, we announced the e-tron GT a couple, a few weeks back. And um, we are going to be announcing the uh, Q4 e-tron, um, the new smaller SUV um, next week, next Wednesday, I think we're going to be announcing that. So look out for that announcement. 
and then also the Porsche uh, brands for for those of you in a, in a with slightly bigger pockets. Um, we've got the Porsche Taycan, um, that's been a hugely popular vehicle, um, all electric. Um, uh, that, that was launched um, just over a year ago. So we're committed to electric vehicles. It's going to be a big part of our future. And it's a big part of what, um, you know, is driving some of the need for, for transformation and new digital products um, alongside those vehicles. And we're also selling our, our EV platforms to Ford. We, we uh, signed a deal last year to provide our, our mass market electric vehicle platform to Ford so that they can build their own vehicles um, uh, on top of the, the electronic architecture that we're providing. And another thing that you might not know, we actually run the fastest EV charging network in the country. Um, you perhaps have seen them around, it's called Electrify America. Um, we uh, offer up to 350 kilowatt chargers. If you're a uh, Tesla owner and you think that uh, Tesla is doing, um, you know, everything right, uh, yes, they're doing a lot of things right for sure. Their fastest chargers are still only 250 uh, kilowatts, so um, we're we're a little bit ahead there for sure. But obviously, we've got a lot of work to do in terms of building out the network. So there's a lot of interesting things happening at Volkswagen, and uh, I just wanted to, you know, set the stage a little bit. Um, Another uh, interesting thing, at least uh, for car nuts like me, the, the VW bus is back. Um, we're bringing this back to the market uh, next year. Uh, it's gonna be on sale in Europe next year and probably 2023 for the US market. Um, but uh, yeah, all electric, um, the, the VW bus called the ID Buzz um, is, coming, is coming back uh, to, uh, to our shores next year or the year after. Okay, um, a little bit then about uh, connected vehicles, right? So, so we, you know, we've been talking about this being uh, you know, the world's largest connected vehicle platform. Um, the, there's, there's a huge amount of demand, there's a huge amount of potential, and there's a huge amount of revenue that can be associated with, uh, with connected vehicles. As we start to move toward electrification and more and more digital products, it does represent a change in um, how uh, manufacturers will actually get revenue from uh, from selling cars, and and so uh, you know it's it's interesting to sort of try and quantify that. The uh, McKinsey uh, have sort of, uh, developed this uh, study that shows that maybe by 2030, car data monetization, so you know the collection of data and being able to deliver data enabled services on top of and around your vehicle um, could be worth globally something in the region of $750 billion a year. And, and we're really not that far away, right? 2030 is just around the corner, really. Uh, so this is a, a huge market opportunity uh, and, and represents a massive uplift, in fact, uh, from, from where um, we are today with most of the traditional OEMs I'm not capturing really any of this uh, yet. There are other big numbers too. Um, autonomous vehicles, which I'm going to talk a little bit more about, but it's it's uh, it's uh, sort of been shown that autonomous vehicles will produce somewhere between five and twenty terabytes of data per day, per day. Um, this is again a massive scale problem um, and an opportunity. And, and if you think about this in the context of the 11 million vehicles per year that we produce. Um, you can start to see why we talk about this in the context of the world's largest IoT platform or the world's largest connected vehicle platform. And to give you a sense of, you know, why the amount of data uh, is, is, is so enormous, it's, it's perhaps useful to think about the, you know, the market, um, uh, the, the capabilities that are in the market today around automated driving. Uh, we're still in, in box number two here, right? If you've got the world's fanciest Tesla or that cool cruise control thing from GM, um, you are in level two and we've got a ways to go, right? In, in terms of um, automated driving. Um, it's really just a slight step up from um, cruise control, right? Which is really level one. The basics of being able to take your feet off the accelerator and the, um, the brakes, that's, that's the level one um, autonomous driving. 
Level two is being able to take your hands off uh, for some of or all of the time. Um, as we go up in, in uh, capability here, uh, the, the vehicle starts to require and generate uh, an enormous amount more data. Um, so we'll be taking um, a continuous video footage around the vehicle. Um, we'll be uh, taking uh, photographs of other things so that we can train the model. Um, an example, um, stop signs look different in different geographies. Um, traffic lights have different sequences in different geographies. Um, a road looks different uh, depending on whether it's wet or has leaves on it or has snow on it. Uh, it's different, uh, you know, lights um, get, uh, penetrate uh, the air differently if it's foggy or misty. It's, it's really a, a huge amount of data that's required for us to make um, autonomous driving real and get to this level five mode where we can all think of ourselves as passengers um, rather than um, sitting there having to actually drive the vehicle. So there's a long way to go. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, we barely scratched the surface uh, with uh, automated driving. Um, if I could authorize the raffle of the bus, Noah, I absolutely would. Um, the, uh, and, and I'm not sure when pre-orders open. I, I think uh, we'll have to wait for uh, official launch dates, probably not until next year. <clears throat> Any other questions here before I move on? I'm going to talk a little bit more about BWAC specifically um, in a second. And if you want to huddle up to me, I can hear your question or just type it in. All righty. Uh, so who are we? What, why do we exist? What are we working on? Um, first of all, I'll tell you, um, you know, Volkswagen Automotive Cloud is a piece of the overall digital transformation strategy here at, uh, at, at Volkswagen. There is a, another group that just announced that they've rebranded themselves as Cariad, um, C-A-R-I-A-D, uh, and, and they are, um, responsible for some of the other pieces of the puzzle as relates um, new digital products and the software and technology platforms on, in, in the vehicle. And, and we're the cloud, the cloud platform on top of all of that. Um, we're both very young organizations. Cariad really just got started the middle of last year in, in, in some ways after VWAC um, was starting to ramp up. And, and so we're at the very beginnings of our journey but hopefully I can give you a sense of what we're doing and why we're doing it and give you a little bit, hopefully, of a demo uh, at, at the end. Um, but uh, yeah, the, both, both pieces of the puzzle are growing fast and still trying to you know, figure out exactly um, you know, what we want to offer and, and deliver to the market. Ultimately, our mission uh, is to uh, you know, open access to vehicle connectivity uh, and driving data. Today, this is really a, a closed ecosystem, right? Very few manufacturers have any kind of API program. Um, very few manufacturers have, have solved the, the problem of updating their software, uh, you know, on, on, over the air or uh, during the life cycle of a vehicle. Um, very few manufacturers have really any meaningful digital products around around their their car. And actually, I'm kind of interested either via chat or or by you know huddling up here. I'd love to know like who who has what they think of as a connected vehicle. Like you know, I have that app on my phone and I can unlock the doors or set the air conditioning. I'd love people to maybe just you know even wave at me or yeah. Who finds any of that functionality useful today? Model Y owner with an app, yeah, cool. An i3, you and you and two other people globally. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know it's still quite early days here, and you know I, <laughs> I think that even when we do have like I um, Volkswagen very kindly uh, gave me a nice new Audi to play with, and uh, the the app that comes with it. Um, allows me to set the, the air conditioning and check the current charge of the battery and, and unlock the doors. But I still don't really think about that as a connected vehicle per se. It's not connected really to anything, right? It's connected to the app. 
Um, but that I don't find to be terribly useful. So we're trying to go a step beyond that, right? And, and, uh, and understand how do we make the vehicle truly connected to our digital lifestyle? lifestyle? Um, you know, how, how do we make it intelligent? How do we make it so that I can go seamlessly from one context to another? And um, I'm, being, I'm really making a platform that allows other people to build interesting things on top of. And, and that's core really then to our, our mission. We know that there's a bunch of smart people out there inside the four walls of Volkswagen um, and uh, well beyond. We want to enable them to do cool things. Uh, and so that, that's really core to our, our mission and, and revolutionize um, what it is to, to be a connected vehicle. And it's because, you know, digital experiences are, I think, how, um, you know, the, the competitive battleground is starting to evolve. Um, I'm not sure, and again, please wave at me or, or tell me otherwise, um, how uh, the, sort of the driving dynamics of the vehicle impact uh, purchasing today, right? It used to be that people really wanted that, you know, lightweight sports car experience, or they wanted a manual gearbox, or they wanted, you know, the V8, or they wanted X, Y, or Z other, other things. Um, and, and I think that that's starting to change. People are starting to shop for um, other capabilities, like does the infotainment system offer me um, all of that sort of rich experience that I expect? Does it have CarPlay or, or uh, um, Android Auto or whatever that um, weird Google thing is? Um, the, those are the sorts of things that are, are starting to, to drive our expectations and therefore um, the competitive battleground. And so as we think about the, the platform that we need to build, it's all of these things, right? Um, being able to um, offer uh, intelligent capabilities around your electric vehicle, being able to plan that trip, um, you know, recommend when you should stop, know that, um, you know, that charger is uh, being serviced or that charging station is all, all of the um, bays are full, right? There's, there's people in each of them already. Um, being able to uh, offer, you know, clever, um, really integrated uh, remote control services, Right, simply unlocking my car from the app on my phone, I don't think is super interesting, but allowing Amazon to leave a, a, a package in the trunk, that might be interesting. Um, being able to find and pay for parking, uh, being able to um, add new capabilities, right? So thinking about, you know, upgrading um, the software on your car. Uh, meet that, and that could be, you know, the things you expect, you initially go to, oh, cool, I get the latest mapping or the, the newest version of the infotainment system. But it could also be um, make the braking system better or uh, improve the rain sensitivity on your uh, window wipers, right? There's, there's so many things that we can do by pulling data from the vehicle, developing something new and interesting, and then pushing or making available new functionality back to the vehicle. Uh, and it's that entire life cycle um, that uh, that we're starting to to think about, and it's and it's it's those sorts of things that a, a new we require a new platform in order to make this real. <clears throat> Order Chick Fil A from my car, absolutely. Um, we it's funny I use this this same example right when I pull into the drive through, uh, it should be possible to get the Chick Fil A menu up on the infotainment screen. And I should be able to press buttons and pay for it all right there. No reason why that can't be done. Um, we just have to uh, provide the infrastructure and guardrails for, for developers to, to actually deliver an experience like that. So this is, this is you know, the key reason why we exist. The problem is that you know, today there's a huge amount of complexity and, and fragmentation uh, across uh, vehicles. And you think, well, it's probably much the same from one Volkswagen to the next. You'd be quite wrong. Um, there's a huge number of different um, vehicle architectures and capabilities, and, and even the, the, the hardware on these vehicles varies significantly from one to the next. So, so that fragmentation makes it very difficult to deliver a unified experience for developers and therefore a unified experience for customers. 
uh, we have challenges around performance and scalability. I won't, I won't tell you um, all of the, 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 the secrets of, of where we're spending money maintaining infrastructure today, but just trying to, to keep some things online and, and, and reliable for our customers today costs a huge amount of money because of that fragmentation. And, and so a, a new platform is, is really required. And it's not just these technical challenges, right? We know that as soon as you drive your brand new car off the forecourt, uh, that it's, it's sort of instantly uh, out of date. And, 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 you know, it's underwhelming for, for customers. The, the fact that, you know, uh, your neighbor down the street gets that brand new BMW and it suddenly has something cooler than your car that you just bought yesterday um, is, uh, is really infuriating for customers, especially because they know um, that it can't be updated. It's, it's instantly obsolete. And, and uh, there's, there's, in most cases, say, no way to deliver um, new features and functionality. So there's a whole bunch of problems here um, that we're, that we're uh, hoping to solve. And that's really where VWAC comes in. In combination with some of the other pieces of the puzzle, um, we're about creating consistency and simplicity for our developers, both within the various VW brands um, and beyond our four walls. Uh, and, and so, you know, this means that perhaps there are applications out there that a Lamborghini owner is interested in that a uh, Volkswagen Passat owner is not. And, uh, and, and that's, that's absolutely fair. Uh, we want to provide the tools so that these developers um, can go serve the needs of those different um, customers and markets. And, and, and really, it's about, you know, delighting customers in new ways and, and making, you know, sure that we can compete in this new digital landscape. And the other thing, obviously, as I said, right, reach and scale is the, is the key to autonomous driving at this point. Um, you know, it's all very well. Tesla makes something like a half million vehicles a year, and they're very nice, as long as you, you don't want it to be painted or anything. Um, uh, but uh, we make 11 million and the data from 11 million vehicles just happens to be more than the data from half a million vehicles. So we can get from level two to level three to level four, we think faster because of, of that, the scale that we can offer. And also because we offer, we operate in so many markets and offer so many different types of vehicles, right? We have um, low cost uh, hatchbacks in Europe. We've got sports cars, we've got SUVs, we've got, you know, all kinds of different um, vehicles on the market. And, uh, and so no, nobody else really has the same capabilities um, and opportunities that, that we, the Volkswagen Group have. And ultimately, you know, we're, we've got this vision that, um, you know, customer safety and privacy uh, is something that we can really impact. Uh, there's still too many cases of, uh, um, you know, customers, um, drivers and, and passengers losing their lives because of something happening, going wrong on the road. And, and I think that we can, we can definitely impact that. So this is the, the solution that we're trying to deliver, a unified platform that really makes it easy. We can hear you now. Uh, sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're doing, um, and not everybody can hear, so I don't know if it was a question. And if so, if you can repeat the question for the entire audience. It, it, it wasn't a question. It wasn't okay. a question. I'll, I'll, I'll edge over this way um, just so that uh, people can have their little um, uh, sidebar space as well. Um, okay. So th this is the, the overall um, vision that we have. I think it sort of uh, manifests itself then in, in similar ways. So I'm using a smartphone analogy, and that's not always the best example and because it's so much simpler, but the, I, I, it's something that we can at least understand. Um, in your iPhone or your Android phone, um, the, you know, there's a set of hardware, there's a platform, uh, your operating system that allows you to uh, you know, make use of that hardware in a consistent way, a set of standard APIs that all developers can consume. Um, on top of that, there are some you know, core features, and then third parties can come along and develop any application they like, um, leveraging um, you know, all of those capabilities uh, in the platform. And that's really what we're trying to do, right? The same is true. We have a bunch of capabilities on the vehicle. 
Um, and it's not just the infotainment. It's, you know, your engine or your electric uh, motor. It's, it's your, you know, the, all of the drivetrain. It's the suspension system. It's, um, you know, really everything in the vehicle can be controlled and managed and, and, and reported upon. Uh, and, and so providing all of those capabilities into a unified software platform is really um, Volkswagen Automotive Cloud. Uh, alongside um, some of the things that our friends in Germany are building, um, the Volkswagen OS. So you can kind of see these two things existing uh, as two sides of the same coin, VW OS on the vehicle, VW AC in the cloud. Uh, and on top of that, then a bunch of core functionality is, is again exposed up to um, third party applications. You can, uh, don't read anything into the logos I've put up here. Uh, there, these I literally just pulled them at random off of the internet uh, earlier today. Um, but I just to, to show some examples, right? The EVGo is a charging network. Being able to um, integrate with that, even just right. So if you think about this, where are their electric vehicles driving around? That helps them plan their charging network, right? Um, travelers insurance, usage-based insurance is becoming an increasingly um, relevant uh, product. And, and customers want it. So uh, being able to do that without having to plug something, um, some third party equipment into your car, being able to deliver that directly um, is interesting. Turo is a ride sharing or a car sharing app, not a ride sharing app, so that I can actually rent my car when I'm not using it. Interesting fact, um, cars are parked 95% of the time. That thing that you, it's the second most expensive thing most people uh, purchase. I guess, unless you're sending your kids to college or something. Uh, and, uh, and, and so that, uh, the fact that it sits there doing nothing 95% of the time is, uh, is interesting. And so could we use it in other ways? Uh, purchasing, this is the same as a Chick-fil-A use case, right? Um, Starbucks drive through Chick-fil-A drive through um, parking, the Amazon guy leaving packages in your, in your car. There's so many opportunities and we're providing that platform. Uh, and yes, yeah, so I've just written that down, that, that uh, feature that auto breaks you when there's a cop nearby, uh, that goes straight into the backlog. <laughs> okay, um, I said I was going to do a little demo. I, I, I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit and show you a video, I hope, um, and just a little snippet. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd explain the context before going straight to that. <clears throat> and the context is this. Um, there's a bunch of platform scenarios we're thinking about. I'm going to show you explicitly this um, area around um, remote and online services, the ability to leverage standard vehicle commands. Um, this platform architecture picture is an eye chart. Um, you don't need to pay any attention really to all of the details, except that it's, a, you know, we're coming in through a set of standard APIs. We're in the vehicle management domain. And we actually talk out to a simulated vehicle. Our transport um, here is, and our protocol is MQTT. We're talking to the vehicle, uh, a simulated vehicle, um, to um, what would be Volkswagen OS in the future. So that's what I'm, I'm going to show you, I hope. So give me a second to uh, sort of change context here. Uh, let's see, where do we have video? <laughs> that's going to play. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Now, the window has gone away, so I can't see any of you, but uh, let's see. Can you hear this? Ah, ah okay. I will, I'll, I'll talk you through it then. Basically, um, what we're showing here is uh, a vehicle connected, uh, a, a fleet use case where we have a, a, a fleet of e-golfs connected to the platform. And this, uh, the, the user here is the, ma the manager of that fleet and it's setting the charging rate um, of this vehicle. So it's sitting parked, plugged into a charger and we've chosen to increase the charge rate in this vehicle so that it can be charged up fully for the next uh, user um, to come along. Um, 
and and so you can see here this is real time it's being sped up because it's a simulation but this is real time um, telemetry data coming back from a vehicle simulator to show that as we increase the charging rate the battery charge um, increases over time um, similarly um, we can start to configure other things i can send a command to um, uh, control the air conditioning bring the internal cabin temperature down so again this is a control command going down to the vehicle and uh, you can see then as that executes the interior uh, temperature of the vehicle will, will start to to come down um, we're showing like the command popping up on the, the infotainment screen um, as well as the the telemetry vehicle uh, the telemetry um, uh, values here in in, uh, in in real time and I think the next piece of the vehicle uh, we're going to talk about um, sort of uh, getting access, locking, unlocking, and and uh, you know controlling some other things on on the car. So if I had authorization, I'd be allowed to uh, walk up to this vehicle using the app, unlock it because it's a fleet car, right? Um, it doesn't have keys lying around, so you have to do it this way. A regular customer would come along and do it this way. So I can lock, start, stop, lock, unlock the vehicle here. Um, and and I think the the final thing that we can see you see engine state just appeared on uh, on the set of telemetry going on and off. And the final thing um, that I think it, it, this demo is going to show us uh, is uh, being able to um, lock the the doors. And here you can see the door locks for front left right um, rear left right. I'm showing locked and unlocked. Uh, so. This, uh, it's, it's perhaps a little hard to, to understand the, what's going on here under the covers, but this is an application basically making API calls through the VWAC platform down into the MQTT integration, vehicle integration layer, and, and then to a simulated vehicle underneath so that we can show um, you know, how developers would uh, be able to interact with vehicles in this standardized, unified way. Um, so this is just a very short example. Sorry, I can't show you more. Uh, it's uh, it's still, as I said, quite early days for the product, um, but um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of a sense. And th and that's all I have for you today. I'd, I'd love to answer any other questions you have um, and uh, and and see uh, yeah what other requirements and ideas you, you you all have for me to add to the backlog. <laughs> hey, thank you, Ross. Amazing. I have a question, actually. Um, with all the data, you, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, the number of data generated per day per car uh, brings uh, the whole company to like, I don't remember how many billions of data every day, right? Um, at some point, are you going, I, I, I'm sure right now you're using external data centers like AWS and others, but at some point, uh, if you're going that route, are you going to like build your own data centers and your own networks and infrastructure it's, in order to handle all, the, all those data? It's a really good question. Uh, the, so the short answer is um, right now, uh, we're all, it's all Azure right now. We, we announced a strategic partnership with Microsoft, both for our connected vehicle infrastructure and for our autonomous driving products. And, uh, and so it's all going into, uh, into Azure at the moment. Um, I'm glad I'm not paying the Azure bill, I can tell you that. Uh, there is definitely a point in time perhaps where it starts to become more cost effective to offload some things from um, sort of the, the public cloud infrastructure. Um, perhaps storing the data uh, in, in, in our cloud is, uh, is, is still uh, the, the best approach. But operating on it, like all of the analysis we might want to do, um, may be offloaded to, um, to to local compute. Okay. Interesting. Other questions? Hey, Ross, it's Kevin. How, and and how if you want to ask a question, I was going to suggest oh. that you activate the megaphone so that everybody can hear the question at the same time. So it's going yeah. to be the last icon in the um, in the icon set you have at the bottom. There you go, Kevin. Got it. Thank you. I'm new, new, new to spatial chat, but this is very, very cool tool, by the way. 
Um, so, uh, Ross, I was just curious how you guys are, are thinking about the security model, both uh, in vehicle and then, um, you know, accessing the service. Yeah, absolutely. So um, th there's it, it will basically be a robust attribute based access control model um, where our consent is uh, retrieved from the, the, the owner, the user, the fleet manager of the vehicle. Uh, so if it, let's take that Amazon dropping a package thing, the sort of standard authorization flow where Amazon would request access um, to your vehicle for the purposes of a certain set of things like op uh, open the trunk, but only once or only within this time period, only when, you know, uh, this other device or this other vehicle happens to be close by. So we can set very um, fine grained access control uh, um, requirements for anybody um, coming in through our APIs. And the same is true of, of the data that gets collected. So if we're, um, we will do both sort of real time streaming of data back up into the cloud for a variety of reasons uh, and, and potentially um, on demand requests for certain types of data. And again, um, that would only be um, when when authorized. Got it. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. I have a follow up to that. Hey, uh, two questions. So first, um, I can tell from personal experience that kids like high schoolers are much less interested in cars than they used to be. So is any of this part of like appealing to them or how are you thinking of? Uh, have you seen that and how, how does that factor in? Yeah, I, I'm not sure where that question was coming from, but the uh, and whether everybody heard it, the, the 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 question was, you know, there's there's a there's a changing um, demographic ar around um, vehicle ownership, and and so uh, yeah, the you know what we're thinking here is, you know, the mobility as a whole. So it's not just about you as a vehicle owner or somebody that buys or leases a new car. Um, it could be, um, you know, when you rent a vehicle or that you're um, you know, using a ride sharing, a car sharing application, um, your settings and, and such can come along with you or allowing um, private owners today to seamlessly make their vehicles, uh, av their vehicles available um, to, to people that don't want to own. So um, this, this platform and this approach allows us to open up a whole different uh, uh, type of uh, user, customer, um, uh, for for vehicles that aren't the the traditional owner or leaser of, of something, does that answer your question? Yeah, that was helpful. And uh, second question is Apple actually making a car? <laughs> the question was Apple is is Apple making a car? Um, I'm uh, I, I really I really couldn't say. I, it would it would suggest that that all of the the media out there can't can't be totally wrong, but uh, I couldn't possibly say. What I will say is um, good luck to them. <laughs> I have a follow-up question, and uh, I do have a friend that works at Apple and integrated systems, and I may or may not have heard something about that. Ah. Um, anyways, uh, the question I have was actually re revolving around your last point there, uh, Ross, where you're talking about it will seamlessly allow users to make their cars available, and that really excites me for the future. And um, this may be a little bit off API topic and more on uh, just global trends, but do you see the ownership shifting more to the company owning cars or one person owning fleets of cars, for instance, and creating kind of small business revenues based off allowing communities to access their car share? I think we've already started to see this trend, right? If, if you're familiar with the app I, I mentioned, Turo, there are already private owners building fleets of vehicles, um, you know, by themselves uh, so that, you know, they can make a buck on the side uh, and turning that really into a, a little miniature business. Uh, I, I also think that it will change the, um, the, the way OEMs, us, the, the car manufacturers, operate in the future. Um, if ownership rates uh, start to, uh, to or continue to decline, um, uh, which, which seems to be a trend that, that will happen, then yes, I think it'll absolutely change um, how we go to market. Um, I'm not the person to give you definitive answers uh, on that, uh, but I, I think there's lots of possibilities there. The only other data point that I have um, for sure is actually with with the past year's uh, you know uh, situation, uh, vehicle ownership has actually gone up for the first time in, in a decade, I think, um, 
because people wanted their own vehicle where it was safe and clean, etc. And and so if you know if that trend continues, then that that could put uh, yeah pump the brakes a little bit, no pun intended, on, on some of those other business models. But um, in general, I I think that there will be a, a whole range of uh, ownership uh, pseudo ownership experiences um, out there. That's fantastic. I mean, I think I've heard uh, at one point or another the term passed around that by 2030, they're expecting the car to be the ownership as common as owning a horse by today's standards. So it'll be kind of more of a unique obelisk kind of uh, objective there. Um, my second question would be for you. Um, I know VW, I believe you guys have worked in transit before. Have you thought about opening this API to public transit or something like that um, for basically requesting stops at random locations and whatnot and being able to communicate with the drivers? Yeah, I, I think like th that's, a, that's a really interesting use case. Um, it's, it's still uh, early days for us to open, open up the platform for developers to come in and, and start to um, you know, work through those use cases with us. But absolutely, I think that there's there's a, a ton of, of of interesting things, both both in terms of uh, you know that sort of you know is that ride sharing, ride hailing, um, you know pu public transportation options, but also perhaps in uh, you know for allow, to allow municipal um, uh, governments uh, and et cetera to to plan their um, infrastructure, roads, bridges, et cetera, right? N knowing where vehicles are and where they're used and and, and uh, you know, where they're going, I think is really key. A data that you typically don't have today. Ah, that excites me for the future. I can't wait to see you guys come up with. Thank you. Ross, you have a, a few questions. So Ross, we also have a lot of questions in the, in the chat. So I was going to, uh, to go through them, if you don't mind. So the first one we received from, uh, was from Akshay. And he was actually wondering how long it will take Volkswagen to bring this to reality and at food disposal for customers. And I think um, I had a similar question, which was like, out of all the services that you presented, how do you prioritize which ones are going to be the first that you're going to release to the, to the public? Really, really great questions. Um, so th there's, a, there's a, a variety of different sort of uh, workflows and phases here. Uh, the, the world of, of autonomous driving, we have, uh, we, we will have, um, uh, autonomous driving test fleets on the road connected to our platform this year. And, uh, and that'll be the beginnings of, of some, you know, specific use case collection. Here's a great example. We don't have many roundabouts here in the US, but Europe is full of them. So we need to have a test fleet um, of cars that drive around roundabouts so that we can figure out how to automate uh, driving around roundabouts. Um, and, and, and this, the same, you know, uh, is true of, of different conditions here. So we, we will be uh, deploying uh, a variety of test fleets with, with, uh, in cooperation with our brands this year, and we'll have at least some of those capabilities showing up in, in customer vehicles as, as early as uh, well, probably the end of slash beginning of 2023. Um, that those are not making unknown public statements here. That's information that has been uh, already announced. I have to be a little careful about making forward-looking statements these days. Uh, <clears throat> but but that that stuff is uh, is is definitely coming and coming soon. The broader platform of enabling um, you know these uh, uh, services across you know an entire brand or entire category of vehicles again. Um, it's it. There are um, uh, phases. We can build software quite quickly, but it takes a while to build vehicles. So um, we're currently working on um, some key vehicle milestones for the next set of premium electric vehicles that are going to be um, um, hitting the roads uh, in in 2024. And those will probably be the first set of cars that are built sort of end to end. Uh, on on the uh, the you know connected to the Volkswagen Automotive Cloud, and then there's another piece of that puzzle just to make it even more complicated. You've probably heard of the the Audi Artemis. So um, this is a brand new uh, vehicle program in Audi, um, a, a new pr premium sedan that is electric, but an entirely new vehicle from the ground up. Basically, um, what we said was. 
you know, go away, figure out how to build a better car, you know, take nothing with you, start with a blank sheet of paper and a pencil and, uh, and build a, a better car. And, and that's, that's the Artemis. And, and that will include all of the new hardware, the VWOS and um, all the uh, VWAC capabilities. And the final thing I'll maybe say on this topic is um, exposing our APIs uh, to the outside world. I don't have a, a timeline for you yet. Um, I, it's it's going to start slow with internal developers uh, for sure, um, just to get uh, you know feedback and engagement and, and prove some of our assumptions, um, and and then it'll be probably a controlled beta access for the public before we go um, live and open. Um, but uh, stay tuned uh, for sure. Uh, I'll be talking about it as soon as soon as uh, as soon as we have some dates. Nice. And I think that um, piggybacks nicely with another question that I actually had was, uh, which was around uh, how the larger community can contribute for open innovation applications. So I think you know, that may not be the first thing you look at. We may stay tuned and hear a little bit more. Yeah. About the coming years. What, what, I, what I will say is, you know, yes, we're a ways away from, from uh, being able to uh, enable people to just go off and do it. But I am really interested in making sure that we capture the use cases and the ideas as early as possible. Um, you know, the, the design approach here is very much outside in, right? And, and this, is a, this is a new thing uh, for, for um, OEMs and for Volkswagen, right? Where the, the, the typical German mindset is, we're very smart and our car is brilliant. And so we'll just expose all the things that the car does as an API. And, and, you know, for those of us that have been in API design and API strategy for a long time, that tends to not yield the best results. <laughs> and what I want to do is think about, you know, what are the services developers are actually interested in, build the API on that basis, and then figure out how to deliver it from the platform and the vehicle infrastructure underneath. Can we make a request for uh, in-car pizza makers? I think everybody would get along with that. <laughs> I, I suspect that would be a big hit. <laughs> Messy, but a big hit. Mm -hmm. Worth it. <laughs> Quick question from Steve uh, around the bandwidth. Considering the amount of data that has to be shared with the uh, Volkswagen AC platform, are you going to use 5G as a standard to communicate? I, you know, I, I don't have, um, uh, you know, real answers for you, but I, I think, you know, obviously it makes sense, right? It is. It's the next step. It's designed for this sort of um, scale. It, it makes it easier um, for um, you know these connected uh, devices to, to communicate enormous amounts of, of, of data. So it, it makes sense. It, it will, as with everything else, be um, a progression over time. Okay. So we also had Mohan who was asking like, is there any standards today for vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to infrastructure integration? Or are you coming up with your own set of integration for the Volkswagen group? Uh, there, so yes, there are some standards out there today. Um, many of the standards exist in the context of uh, sort of vehicle telemetry or uh, the commands and controls that, that exist between um, devices on the vehicle, things like AutoZar, uh, exist. Uh, the APIs that we're exposing, um, nothing really exists in terms of standardization just yet. Um, and I think that that's an opportunity. I'm certainly very interested in um, either co-creating or adopting um, standards that are out there. Um, quick plug, I'm hiring a, an API product owner right now, if you know anybody that's interested. And interested, uh, come knock on my door. Uh, the and, and that part of that person's role, at least, will be to explore the adoption and creation of standards. The other piece um, that's also relevant is is data collection. So all of the data that's streaming off the vehicle, we want to be able to standardize that as well. Some standards exist; others need to be extended or de or developed. Um, and and just you know the basics of. When I get tire pressure from the vehicle, what's the unit? Is it pounds per square inch, PSI, or is it something else, right? And so being able to create consistency of data is, is really key as well. Mm -hmm. Very good point. 
we had a couple of questions that uh, I was going to tie together. Um, so Patrick was asking, or he was making the point that his family has multiple drivers beyond beyond the owner, um, so like the spouse, the kids. So will there be features personalized to a specific driver? And uh, Dave had a question in the same feed, which is around uh, how much control will a person have in terms of what information is shared with Volkswagen? Yeah, so de definitely two, two really important topics. Um, today, the, the various brands are, are very much in control of uh, identity-based services, right? So if you're an Audi driver today, or like on a more recent Audi, you're probably familiar with the idea of your Audi ID. Um, and you log into your vehicle with it, right? It will ask for your username and password and type it in. Um, I, I, and and that, uh, I think that, that concept can be easily extended then to make use of other, to, to, make, to make use of that identity in new ways. I buy a new Audi, my settings should come with me. Like I like these things on the instrument cluster, these screens in the instrument cluster. Um, I like my seat this way. I like it to unlock just the driver's door, not all four doors. Those sorts of things should be able to come with you rather than having to program it all again. This the is a little old school, but you know your your uh, presets on your your radio, even if it's serious and not not uh, AM FM stuff, right? Those things should be able to come with you. Um, but as I said, it's quite brand um, oriented at the moment. So Audi is Audi and Porsche is Porsche. Um, but I think there's an opportunity for us to create um, uh, more cohesion. So uh, you might have an Audi, but you've just purchased your new, uh, a new Volkswagen for your college uh, kid, right? And, and so you might drive it occasionally. Your identity should show up there too. So I think there's, there's a lot of possibility here um, to share identity um, and personalization and preferences. Um, between between vehicles and, and and have that be part of you rather than part of the the vehicle um we're still working through some of those ideas and and i, I think it, there's there's clear value and, and interest from customers um as relates to the second part of the question um you're in total control of what data um we collect or share um, as I was describing at a very high level, this notion of attribute based access control, and it's very much tied to that. So um, you, you decide who gets to collect data, connect to the vehicle, when, uh, you know, where, for how long, etc. cetera. Um, and, and, and this isn't, there's no need to reinvent the wheel here. This is standard, um, you know, uh, authentication authorization uh, capabilities that we're adopting uh, and, and one of our, our core values um, and product design principles is, um, you know, to, to value um, customer privacy and compliance and, and make sure that we can, uh, yeah, deliver when, when on what customer expects there. That makes sense. We, we keep having a lot of questions, so I'm super excited to see that. And since we still have a little more time, mm -hmm. uh, I just keep going unless Somebody wants to jump in? If you don't mind, I'm going to take a sip of my bourbon now. Uh, oh, got a <laughs> hey, my guy. Drink of choice. Yes. So. <laughs> That's what this is all about. <laughs> all right. Well, so continuing with the questions in the chat, um, always actually, like, he's passionate about your topic. I don't know which industry or which company you work for, but. Uh, you know, I see that you have a lot of questions. So uh, actually, I was asking if you can share some insights on the data-driven monetization and how different APIs can be integrated in the vehicle. Um, so he was talking about RFID-based payment system for a car. Mm. Um, I wanted to connect that with another question from Patrick again, uh, who was asking whether there was going to be uh, any plans to interact with some home automation systems. So like you know, the <clears> garage <throat> door, the lights in the garage, this kind of thing. So first one around the monetization, second one around integration with the, um, the home ecosystem. Yeah, so I think, you know, monetization there's there's so much opportunity i i don't know that there that you know we we have even scratched the surface in terms of understanding the hows and the wheres of monetization opportunities i do know that being able to deliver new capabilities to the vehicle um will be uh, an upsell opportunity um uh, for uh, oems going forward we've seen this sort of be proven 
um, uh, by Tesla, right? You can buy the Tesla vehicle without um, the um, cruise auto, whatever they call it, the cruise control thing. Um, and, uh, and so we can, we'll be able to do um, similar things. You'll be able to purchase those uh, capabilities um, you know, in your vehicle. <clears throat> I think uh, the, the example of uh, you know, an RFID uh, chip in the car to pay for other things is also uh, definitely an opportunity and a possibility. In fact, um, so in some places this exists already. Um, we have uh, some vehicles with built-in um, toll charge uh, mm. RFID chips already. Um, so you don't have to put that ugly thing um, on your windshield. Uh, so, so that, that sort of infrastructure is, is being built in and it's about them building partnerships with, with other, uh, um, participants in the ecosystem. I can certainly see uh, a world where, you know, you can pay for parking and pay for charging and, and all of that simply, uh, by, your, you know, virtue of your vehicle being close by. Um, so yes, there's, there's a world of opportunity and I won't pretend to know what all of those opportunities are. <laughs> Uh, I've forgotten the second question. The second one was around uh, integrating with home automation for like the garage light, the garage door. Yeah, kind of I think this really comes back to my one of my opening points that you know today when we say connected vehicle, that, you know, it's not really connected. Like it's it's got an internet connection, but it's not connected to anything. And I think there's so much opportunity here, and it's it's you know, again, you know, the fact that you might uh, when you you know. Uh, set the alarm code on your uh, ring alarm system or whatever, uh, press the lock or arm button on your, uh, on that uh, keypad, it should start and start your car and start the air conditioning or the heating, Like right? That's a connected experience. Um, if I've got a meeting in my calendar that requires me to drive somewhere, um, you know, the meeting already starts to show you the driving time. That's cool. Um, it should also show the preconditioning time and start your car and precondition it before you get into it. If I know I've got to drive to Boulder on a snowy morning, I'd like to know that the car is, uh, you know, warmed up before mm -hmm. I go outside without thinking about it. It's that piece of, you know, it's very manual today and I have to go to the app and I just think, oh, it's exhausting. Who would ever do that? Um, so I, I think for sure being able to create that real connected experience between all of the other things that we've become used to in our digital life um, is super important. That's what, there's a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There was like another use case that uh, Brendan actually just shared in the chat. Um, so he was talking about potentially gaining some Volkswagen credits when you start leasing your car and then being able to reuse those credits uh, and spend them at Starbucks or any other place. So, you know, that's one that you can Keep in the back of your mind for when we you start looking at the, um, the third part integration. Absolutely, I, I love that use case. I, I, I actually, you know, I think that this this idea of creating new business models around the vehicle, you know, like it might be interesting that I can uh, buy a slightly more expensive vehicle because it's going to earn money back for me, right? Um, and that could be factored into your loan application, right? That there's there's inherent revenue associated. We do this, and people do this when they're buying a house today, right? They say, well, it has an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit, or it has an extra bedroom I'm not going to use, but I might rent it out, right? And they can factor that potential income from uh, Airbnb or whomever into the purchasing plan. Um, I think we should be able to do that with our vehicles as well, especially considering that, as I said, they sit there doing nothing a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. and I see that Akshay is actually in Wolfsburg, so that means it is uh, the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that's how interested he is. And now, now that he mentioned that he's, he worked for Daimler and Mantrax in Germany, I understand where the questions come from. But yeah, thanks for joining us. I think Christoph yes. was from Poland, so it's also like pretty late their time. So I really appreciate that. Um, another one that we have from Daniel, will, will Volkswagen keep the current US go-to-market models or will you launch brands like Seat, Skoda in the US as well? And by the way, just for the protocol, we Germans are smart. So another one based out of Europe who's joining us in the middle of the night. Yeah. Uh, the. And it's a little like further away from like the topic of the, yeah, the, the, you know, the cloud. I, I, I wish I, I had, you know, insight really to share with you. 
Uh, what I, I can tell you a story. Um, I haven't really been a Volkswagen Group customer uh, for a long time, but my very first car was a Skoda. Um, the accent might give away that I'm not from the US originally. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I certainly like the idea of some of these other, um, other brands uh, showing up here in, in North America, but I, I really have, I have no insight into that whatsoever. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, there's, there's a, a big transformation happening here, you know, getting, um, you know, rebuilding Volkswagen's brand in, in, in North America, um, introducing more SUVs, and more electric vehicles has certainly been a key, a key play for us. So um, I, I would expect to see more of that um, rather than uh, more brands right now, but uh, really, I don't know. <laughs> that makes sense. Um... One last question as uh, we have in the chat. So um, if I skipped your question, make sure to repost it in the chat so we can cover it or just jump in um, as soon as we're done with this one. Um, so Brendan was asking, will this system assist in automation and manual drivers mixing? By example, allowing key data to reach automated drivers to assist in driving and vice versa. Hmm. I, I'm not sure that I fully understand the question, Brandon. Um, sure. I, so <clears throat> perhaps like uh, for saying like when we have this mixed case use before eventually, which I hope we become all automated, right? We'll have manual drivers and regular drivers. So manual drivers will hopefully be equipped to this API system. Do you guys plan to have a peer to peer connection between uh, mixed use cars to help assist in your automation? So. Yes, again, I, there, there's some forward-looking things here that I, I really can't uh, speak definitively about. But I, I, again, I see opportunity. Um, one of the, the key areas is sort of continuous uh, training for our AI and ML models around um, uh, automated and assisted, assisted driving. Um, and, and some of these things you know, aren't necessarily even about uh, driving itself. So here's an, an interesting uh, use case. Uh, a lot of modern cars have automated high beam assist, right? So your high beams go on um, based on the information that's getting from sensors, right? So there's uh, traffic ahead of you. You can see taillights, oncoming cars, um, other things that suggest you don't need your high beams on or that you do. Um, and, and so what if uh, a car equipped with that feature, the driver overrides it, you know, seven out of 10 times? That's useful information that the that the um, automated system needs to know. So we could collect that sort of data back from the vehicle that the driver said, "No, you got it wrong. I got to I got to turn them off or turn them on manually." Um, that goes back to uh, the the AI model, so so that we can make the system better, and then through over the air update, push the new capability down to all those vehicles that are equipped with that with that feature. Great answer. No, that's awesome. I, I'm excited to see how you guys get that whole meshing network to kind of help grow each other. Because I think there will probably be some people who never want to drive an automated car and God help them. They're going to need help when cars are going 145 miles an hour. <laughs> yes. Well, people could go to Germany and have that experience uh, right now, I suppose. I, su <laughs> I, I suppose that's true. <laughs> Awesome. So we went through all the questions um, in the chat, except for one, which is um, from actually again, how can we get in touch with you, Ross? Um, so what I was going to suggest is as soon as we receive the link to the recording for this session, we are going to reach back to everybody since we have your email address via the, the meetup. Um, and we are going to give you the link to the recording as well as share the information um, on how you can reach out to Ross if he's fine sharing this uh, data. Yeah, no, I'm more than happy to share share my information. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my uh, Twitter handle is at GSSOR. It's my name backwards. I'll just flash that up here. It's, the first, it's on the first screen. And you can find me easily on LinkedIn. Please reach out if you want to do that. Um, and uh, I, I will send my email uh, details uh, when, we, when we have the recording. And yeah, please, please reach out. Happy to continue the conversation. <laughs> All right. Well, so yeah, since we, we came up with uh, all the questions and we could answer all of them, that's um, awesome. 
I just wanted to say, I think I speak in everybody's name uh, and I say a big thank you to, to you, Russ, because that's been an amazing session. Um, I think out of the four, that's where we had the most question coming up. So I think people like really connect and really like translate even better when it's something like a topic that is very close to, to them. And um, I mean, this view on what the car and the connected car is going to be in the coming years, I think that's something uh, everybody can relate to. And, uh, and that's why we had such a, a great participation. So I appreciate everybody's question and everybody's joining. Uh, we are like 30 minutes, 13 minutes away from the end. Um, so we can keep the special chat open for another 13 minutes. Uh, so if some of you want to like you know, hang out and socialize like we used to do uh, at the end of the session, feel free to stay there. Uh, but again, Ross, thanks a ton. That was an excellent uh, presentation. My pleasure. Thanks Ready? for having me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I look forward to joining these sessions again. I really like the platform. Thanks, guys, for putting it together. Absolutely. I'm glad you could use it for with your team, you know. <laughs> all right, cool. Well, so I think we're going to stop the, the broadcast and stop all the megaphones. And yeah, you can just use the, the remaining minutes to catch up with some old colleagues or just like meet new colleagues or new friends that you want to discuss API with or any other topic that you may like. All right. Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon.